This video is on developing the formula for the probability of successes using Benelli trial experiment. The probability of our successes is equal to the combination formula of n things taken at r time times p raised to the r power times q raised to the n minus r power. The combination formula of n things taken r at a time is equal to n factorial divided by r factorial times the quantity n minus r factorial. Six dice are thrown. What is the probability that exactly two of the dice come up with at least three? We have six trials. The probability of success is a three, four, five, or six. The probability of a three, four, five, or six is equal to one six plus one six plus one six plus one six which is equal to 4 6, which reduces to 2 thirds. 6 choose 2 turns out to be 15. So what we have is some combinations of 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 1 third times 1 third times 1 third times 1 third, which is equal to 4 over 729. Putting this all together, we have the probability of exactly 2 is equal to the combination formula of 6 things taken 2 at a time times the probability of success, two-thirds raised to the second power, times the probability of failure, one-third raised to the sixth minus second power. This turns out to be the numbers that we calculated up here. So it's 15 times 4 over 729, which reduces to 20 over 243, which is approximately 0 0.0823. We can generalize these results where we have the combination of n things taken r to time, p raised to the r power times q raised to the n minus r power, we can come up with our formula up here. Let's take a look at how we came up with the answers in our CAS view. We typed the problem in directly into our calculator and it gave us a fraction answer. We input it a second time and pressed shift enter which gave us the approximate answer. To find out what the combination formula of six things taken two at a time, we put it in directly and got the answer to be 15. To find this combination formula, we hit our toolbox, hit probability, and then we select the combination menu item. We use the home view as well. Press the home key. When we put the problem into the home view, it gave us our answer in scientific notation that was equivalent. To get part of our working answers, we just put part of the problem in. The advantage to the home view is that it gives us a decimal answer, but when we press the ABC key, it switches it over to fractions. We have switched our calculator over to the OneNote second problem calculator screen. Six dice are thrown. What is the probability that at least two of the dice come up with at least three? The at least two and the at least three are somewhat confusing. The at least three refers to three, four, five, and six, which gives us the probability. The at least two means exactly two or three or four or five or six. The easiest way to work this is to work it as 1 minus the probability of at most 1. We take 1 minus the quantity for 0 plus the quantity for 1. And this turns out to be 716 over 729, which turns out to be 0 0.9822 rounded. Looking at our calculator, we put in exactly two. We typed one minus, hit our parentheses, copied this down to our command line, edit it so that it was six things taken zero time raised to the zero power and six minus zero. Hit the add sign, copied it down again, edit it so that it was six things taken one at a time to come up with this answer. Hitting the ABC key, we switched it to the fraction, so we used the fraction and the decimal answer here. Pressing the CAS key, 
to switch over to the CAS view, we put the answer in in the positive format. For at least two, we copied this down and put the add sign and did this five times. So we wanted the two, three, four, five, and six. As you see, we ended up with the same result, 716 over 729. We have switched our OneNote over to the subpage and our calculator to the calculations for the subpage. We are now going to do the mean, variance, and standard deviation for a binomial distribution. Here are three formulas that allow us to do it easily. We're also going to look at the histogram and we're going to go to the app that lets us work on these calculations. We have taken the information from the problems on the formula page and put it into the STAT1VAR app. The results from the STAT1VAR statistics are shown in this screenshot with the mean of 4, a standard deviation of approximately 1.155, and a variance of 1.33 repeating. Over here in our calculator, we are using these three formulas, typing in these variables. We see that the mean is equal to 4 in both cases. Variance is equal to 1.33 repeating both situations. And the standard deviation is equal to 1.155 rounded. We use the weighted mean because it gives us the expected value over 1. Scrolling up, we have this screen here. Putting the probabilities, D2 is a little tricky. We will go over that later. We have already talked about how manually doing these answers and using the calculator comes up with the same answer. We set up the page with the values so that we can draw a picture of our graph. We go with a width of 1. We go from minus 1 to 7. So since we were going up here from 0 to 6, we pick 1 less than 0, which is minus 1, and 1 more than 6, which is 7. To draw our thing with some spacing, we go from minus 1 to 8. Looking at these numbers as decimals, we pick to go from negative 1 tenth to positive 4 tenths. For our x tick mark, we use 1, and for our y tick mark, we use 0.1. So when we hit the plot key, we ended up with this graph. Now let's look at how we use the stat1 variable app to draw the picture of the histogram. We move up on our calculator and select this item. Then we go to Shift Copy to put it onto our clipboard. Press the app key, select the STAT1VAR app, hit start. The nice part again about the apps is that we already have this information in it, but we want to show you how we put this information into it. For D1, just select the cell, type the values, and press return. For the values in cells for D2, select the cell, then select Shift and Paste. Select our item here, so we're going to press OK. Then we need to edit our item, so we need to change this 2 to a 0, this power to a 0, and this power to a 0. We're going to use the same procedure for every one of these cells. So the next cell will have a 1 in this place, this place, and this place. Then the third cell will have the two that's shown here, and so forth. So this is how we get the stuff into these cells. To demonstrate what's going on, I already pressed Enter, and it moved automatically to the next cell. What happens here is we press Shift and Paste. Now it has the last one that we put in. I like to echo this one back so that I can double check that I made sure I put it in. Now I'm going to have to change these to a 1. Let me escape out of here and leave all these values because we've already preset this before. And again, the advantage 
to the apps is that when you come back unless you reset it it still has the data in it that you put in it before we went through and added all these probabilities to d2 we press the SYMB key and make sure that we have D2 in this label. We go to Shift Plot and we set up our values. So we want it to go from negative 1 to 7 with the width of 1, from negative 0.1 to 0.4, X tick to be 1, and Y tip to be 1 tenth. Then we hit our plot. We want to change our tick mark up to here. So we go to menu. We go to, we type in 4.5 because that's half of the width. So four plus half the width is 4.5. We hit okay. And we hit our menu key to get our final answer. One other thing we probably should have said is when we hit the shift plot we needed to go down and make sure the label key was set up to this point we have been typing the formula in manually there is another technique that we can use that makes our work easier went back to the formula page and the calculator page and changed them to take advantage of built-in formula binomial. Let's take a look at the calculator screen that shows how we work the two problems on this page. Using the CAS format of colon equal, we write what the binomial built-in function does with the parameters n, p, and r. To work the first problem on this page, we bring up the built-in function binomial, six things, Probability of two-thirds taken two at a time, get our answer to be 20 over 243, which is the same answer we have right here. For the second problem, we take one minus parentheses, binomial, six things, probability two-thirds taken zero at a time, plus binomial, six things, two-thirds, probability taken one at a time. The answer turns out to be 716 over 729 which is the same answer that we got here. Let's take a look at our calculator. Pressing the CAS key and looking at the CAS view. If we highlight this and copy it, and then if we switch to the home screen and press enter, we will get this command transferred to the history area. Notice how we have lower case when it's in CAS view but the command itself, when it's written the history area, is always written with uppercase. If we do the command inside the home view, it will show in the edit area as uppercase, but since we transferred it from the CAS view to the home view, it shows as lowercase. Press and escape to clear our command line. Let's go to our second page, our subpage of OneNote. We had a lot of problems entering this in when we were using the combo formula manually. It's much easier when we use the binomial command to do this. If we take our calculator, highlight it, hit shift, copy to put it onto our clipboard, go to the Noom screen, move over to our first entry, hit shift, paste, we see that we have this command in our clipboard. Press OK. We need it to be a zero, so we move to the two backspace. Press zero. Press OK. And now it moves down to the second line. This is much easier than having to edit the long formula. So we do this for all the answers. The answers turn out to be the same. This ends our video on using the Benoli probability formula, the short techniques for figuring out the mean, variance, and standard deviation, and the creating of the histogram for the binomial distribution.